Hey, welcome back to the Think Bigger Real Estate Show. I am your host, Justin Stoddart, and absolutely thrilled today to bring to you someone who is um, a, a friend of mine and an absolute um, icon in the industry, in the real estate industry. She acts as the uh, Senior Vice President, National Marketing Manager for Old Republic Title, and um, I get opportunities to learn from her, and I thought today how appropriate it would be to share some of that and allow those that, um, that uh, tune into this show get a chance to meet Michelle and uh, hear her sharing some some really awesome stuff that she's learned in how many years in the industry, Michelle? Oh my gosh, I think I'm 23 now. Can you believe how it? How cool. Coming up on a quarter century in this wonderful industry. Yeah. And uh, so first and foremost, thank you so much for taking the time and making the effort. I know um, like many of, of, of my guests, um, video is not something that you love to do. It's but, my kryptonite. Uh, it's my kryptonite. <laughs> You're um, you're awesome at it. So um, I think everybody's gonna try, probably private message you. In fact, if you if you have like find value in what Michelle says today, will you please let her know? Do more video, please. Do more video. <laughs> uh, awesome. Let's let's dive into this. Um, as as you know, Michelle, as you've probably heard me say before, is that my mission and passion um, is really to help people think bigger and to help them um, as a result of that grow themselves so that their business can grow. You know, you and I both know that businesses don't grow, at least they don't grow sustainably unless there's the, the, the personal growth behind it. And uh, I know for that reason alone, um, you've risen to the heights that you have and the, the ability that you have to impact um, in, in large degree because you're deeply committed to de like developing yourself and constantly learning. And um, I, I love that about you, that you, like every time I talk with you, you've got like stories from your previous positions, stories that you're learning now, like there's always just something top of mind that you're identifying a lesson and then you're sharing it with other people. Um, did you have to grow into that and kind of learn that ability to, to, to identify, to, to start really picking out the lessons in life? Or have you kind of always been just a curious student like that? You know what? It's a, it's absolutely a, a I'm totally curious about everything. And I have to tell you, really, my passion is people. I love to learn and grow. And if I, there's one thing that I say every single day, please let me learn from others so I don't have to fall into the same pits that they fall into. Huh. If I can avoid one pit um, by learning from someone else, then that to me is worth a million dollars. And so studying people and learning from them and seeing what's working and what's not and just being super curious. I think, you know, people, people are so amazing um, at every level and there's so much to learn. And I love it when I talk to someone and they sort of hit me upside the head and make me think differently. And that those are the moments that I'm that I pull from to say, how does this affect my personal life today? I love that. You know, my the signature question that I ask at the end of, of nearly every episode is what do you do to intentionally think bigger? Like what, like how do you position yourself to where your possibilities are always expanding? And I think you might've already answered that question is, is that you're just a very curious student of what other people are doing? Absolutely. Um, that, you know, I had a professor in college who said, uh, never make up a story because what people will tell you, it's not possible for you to dream up. Um, we were actually doing a project where we had to go out and interview people. And she said, don't try to skip over this interview part because I guarantee you, if you, if you try to write this paper without having done the work, I'll know it because you are not, you can't possibly dream up what people are really going to tell you. Huh. Isn't that interesting? And isn't that true in life too, in business? that, um, you know, kind of faking it only gets you so far. Like you actually have to do the work. Now, some people get lucky and they, you know, la like land a couple of big deals. But if you aren't doing the work behind the scenes, eventually it shows up and the business doesn't last. Like, and, and, and you know, I, I would even add to that. If you're not growing into the person that can sustain that success, pretty soon the tide goes out and you're left without your shorts. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and you know, I think, Justin, it's so important for you to learn it here but you've got to learn it here because if you just learn it here, it won't translate. When you learn it here in your heart, that's where the magic happens. What have you found on that note? Um, before we get into the, the um, kind of the, the, the content of today, I'm fascinated by this topic. What have you found, Michelle, to take it from head to heart? Is there, is there some, have you identified like what lessons go from here to here and, and how you get it to do that? Any thoughts on that? You know, you really have to apply things to your own personal life. And, and the most important piece to get it to translate from your head to your heart is, is judgment. 
don't pass judgment because I guarantee you when you're learning things here in your head and you're trying to translate them, um, if you're passing judgment, because we all learn and, and it, there's many different teachers out there and you read books and if you're passing judgment on the things that people are doing, um, you're never going to internalize it. Um, the moment you stop to say this person is smarter than me or wealthier than me or the, the, the converse is they're not as smart as I am or they don't have as much as I do and you pass judgment, that's when you stop learning because when you look at all of these people as there's something to learn at every stage age, that's when your heart is open to be able to internalize that so you really can get the message. That's cool. Almost opening your heart to the people that you're learning the lessons from. Absolutely. Uh, helps with that process. I love yep. it. Great stuff. And, and, and also, like you said, um, where you have to do it, right? Like wisdom comes as you apply knowledge. Uh, and like you said, I, I think there's a, there's a really practical component of everything that you learn. Unless you apply it, it's going to stay in your head and eventually go. But if you start to live it, then you, you as a, your soul starts to really buy into that, that this is my new identity. This yeah. is who I am, right? Absolutely. And it's like, it's kind of like riding a bike. People can watch videos about riding bikes. They can hang out with Lance Armstrong. They can, you know, um, have a bike and dust it off and, and read all about it and watch every YouTube video out there. But at some point you've got to get on the bike yeah. and you got to pedal because you've got to translate that from your head to the, the physicality of it and you're probably going to fall and you're going to be off balance and, but don't delay riding the bike thinking you're going to study it and become a student. And then, you know, before you ever get on the bike. Mm. Great points. I love it. And what a great segue into us having some really cool things, kind of some cool conversations to talk about. So uh, let's talk about for those that are going away for the weekend, right? For those that are listening to this live or near live, we're on the cusp of a Memorial day weekend. So maybe if you're listening to this later, just know that this applies at all times, not just for this holiday. Uh, but you had some interesting advice about um, when you go visit a different city, picking up real estate magazines. Talk a little bit about that. What's your methodology behind that? Absolutely. Well, we all know in the in the towns and cities that we live in, we can tell you who the top producers are and probably the statistics on who is doing what type of business. Uh, when you go away to a, another town and you don't know who are the top producers? What What is the real estate market really like there? You pick up a real estate magazine, and this is where you're at your freshest. This is when you have the, that, that clear mind to be able to look at this objectively and see what, what resonates with me. What, where am I learning the most? Who in this magazine is inspiring me to call them, and what am I learning about the market? And I think at those moments, that's when you have that clarity because it's not clouded by all of these other judgments that you have. Um, right. to really look at that market and see who is doing a great job. Um, and, and, and that's, I think, what you bring back. So when you're, you're out there, and this is why I highly recommend taking lots of vacations and learning and studying and doing, because that's when you get a chance to, to cleanse your mind, go out and look at things from a different perspective. Really interesting, because you're right. We are almost too close to our own market, right? We see someone's marketing, and maybe we know the backstory, or we have some ju some judgment about the backstory and why they are the way they are. So we don't look at it through the eyes of a consumer, yep. which is um, how really what matters, right? Because they're the customer; they're the ones that are going to choose which realtor they're working with, which property they're going to go see, which property they're going to make an offer on or not. Yeah, um, I love that. What a great way to to, to really learn from other people. Now, in addition to that, I, I would say of how important it is to build a network of real estate agents outside of your area, right? Some of the best real estate agents that I know have multiple streams of, of revenue, one of which is agents from outside of the area that are referring them. And how cool to say, hey, I just visited your town. I picked up a magazine and was so impressed or I saw um, an ad show up um, you know, um, on Facebook when I was in your town and I can tell that you do really great marketing. I'm also a student of marketing. I'm passionate about the marketing that I do. I'd love to, to have a conversation with you and see if we can set up a referral relationship to where if people are ever moving to your town or, I'm, or I've ever got people moving to your town that, you know, we can collaborate. It looks like we do business similarly at a high level. Yep, absolutely. And that's this world is becoming so much smaller. And we're seeing that in my role working nationally, we see that happen all the time. People are moving from one area to another, or they have family members in those areas. And it is different. And it's a different market. And it's so fascinating how they're different. 
Um, even from our perspective, Justin, just on the closing process, you know, um, if someone's moving to Texas, they're sitting around a table that's a lot like a party, you know, having some uh, typically some food with both sides sitting there, um, signing the documents and handing over the keys. We don't see that in other states. In other states, it's it's um, they're signing separately, and there's a, a couple of days delay before they're actually handing the keys over. So even the processes on how the this works is very different. So it's so fun to talk to different people and to understand that, and um, and just to see how what are they doing that we can do that we can take advantage of. Now, obviously the closing process is something different, but now if you're, if you're looking at the experience, um, you start to say, Oh yeah, I don't know why we do it the way we do it. Um, what are, what are the opportunities for me to do it differently? Yeah, no, that's awesome. I love it. Great tip for those of you that are going out of town and what a, what a great reason to get yourself out of town more often. Right. Um, let's talk about, um, uh, taking the high road, right? Um, obviously you and I are both a part of a lot of Facebook, uh, real estate related groups. And uh, sometimes those turn into kind of vent sessions and complaint sessions. Um, what are your thoughts on taking the high road when it comes to real estate? So, uh, you know, and being part of several private groups, and I love it just to have a window into what's going on in the world mm -hmm. and, and hearing people really talk where it's not public, but talking privately between themselves. And, and I often see people who get bad news. And in the case of real estate, um, you know, it's your your best friend or a family member that's decided to use someone else other than you. And it does hurt. It's a, it's a shot right through your heart and your immediate reaction is to, you know, cut them off. I'm never talking to that friend again. You know, they're not invited to my book club any longer. You know, that's it. Um, and I feel like we have to be prepared in those moments where we're getting bad news. And, and Justin, you know this from working in title and escrow. Um, we have we we walk very similar paths to our real estate agent friends in that we do have you know, we're out there trying to do the best possible work in educating and sharing so that we can in turn get get escrows and title work. And it really is not so much the way that you uh, experience success or, or winning, if you will. You get that contract, you get that listing, um, you get that buyer, but it's how you respond when the news is not in your favor. Yeah. And, and honestly, when that's hitting you, um, if you don't have a go-to in your head that you can, can quickly um, say, all right, how, I have two paths here. If you're not prepared, um, then you're probably going to go down the wrong path because it's very attractive. That path of bitterness and snarkiness and, and all of that is, is lined with beautiful flowers to try to get you to go down that path. Um, but you have to instinctively, when you feel that moment happen, you have to instinctively go to your go-to. And I always say the high road is never the wrong road. Um, because I'm watching, I watch people even on Facebook say things and I want to go into that snarky road with them and, and be like, you know, you don't need those people. Um, <laughs> um, but you find out that people are really, when they're going down that road, there, there's something else. Um, those, those, even the braggadocious people on Facebook, when you see them, you know, oh, and maybe it's maybe you're getting hit because you were up for that same listing. And now your friend is saying, I got this fabulous listing, you know, and and immediately you start feeling bad. Um, I would say you've got to say the high road's never the wrong road. What am I going to do here? How am I going to respond? Because every time and I have to tell you without without fail, every time I go down the wrong road, or I go down the snarky road for a split second, it feels great to be like, boy, did I tell them? <laughs> and then it's horrible. There is no payoff there. Right. Yeah. Um, and, it, and nothing a good ever comes from going down that road, even for a minute. So always say, what's the high road here? And when you train your brain to do that, and I liken it, and I know this is going to be kind of crazy, um, but you have to have a plan, right? And you have to have a plan, and you have to train your brain where to go to very, very quickly. Otherwise, it's you you spend too much time in that feeling of of that shot in the heart, right? Um, I know. Um, I always think about um, if I'm ever at an ATM and someone holds me up. You know, if you give them your money or you don't give them your money, you have equal opportunity, equal chance of being hurt and, and worse being killed. Um, so I've always thought, man, if someone ever holds me up at an ATM and I hope, you know, please don't ever test me on this. I'm going to fall on the ground and just start flopping around like I'm having a seizure. And I thought that's going to take the element of surprise away from them. But here's the gig is that 
if I'm, if I'm prepared at that moment and I've got to go to, and I'm not sitting there going, Oh my gosh, this person has just ambushed me and I don't know what I'm going to do next. I know I've played that out in my head. It's good things too. playing out. If you're going to win or if good things are going to happen, how are you going to respond? But if those bad things happen, and this goes even to just seeing things on, on Facebook, things that are hurting your feelings or people that say things, that moment when you have that feeling of this, this doesn't make me happy or it makes me sad, if you automatically train your brain to say the high road is never the wrong road, you're going to be able to come up with something positive to say. And that's going to lift you up and keep you from this really this dismal place of, of fear and sadness and anxiety and, and jealousy, right? Um, so the high road's never the wrong road. And it, it, it literally, every time, yanks me out of whatever path I'm going down to. And then I'm set free from all of this, from any bad news that's coming my way. You know, one thing I don't cover in this show is politics, Michelle, but I've got to make a comparison here. Whether you are a Trump fan or whether you are a Hillary fan, it's interesting to me, um, and occasionally I'll be on Twitter, um, and it's interesting to see how, when, whether the president or Clinton or somebody tweets, how there's immediate trolls that are just waiting to pounce upon that. And I don't think any of them have had any impact on any of those people really, but like, what a miserable life. I thought to myself, like, it would suck to be that person. Like I my agree. whole life is waiting for someone that I hate to say something so that I can try and counter it. Like, and I think probably nobody on this episode on, 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 in this audience does that, but I love what you're saying. Cause I think that, that, um, stepping totally on the opposite end of the spectrum of that to say, I'm going to look for the good in the world and I'm going to focus on that. And when something, um, uncomfortable, uh, or unfortunate happens to me, here's my plan. Here's how I'm going to respond to that so that I can be always out of that negative. You know, I was talking to a um, friend of mine yesterday who told me that um, just a few years ago, I want to say, the, I think it was a CIA um, declassified a document that showed proof that, that there is matter associated with thoughts. And uh, I got to look this up myself. So this isn't totally um, validated, but, but interesting, when you go back to the book, um, Think and Grow Rich, Thoughts Are Things right? And we might think for a moment that by us having a negative thought or saying a negative thing is, is, isn't affecting us. It is. If we, if we play in the mud, we're going to get muddy, period. And so to have a plan to get out of that, whether it be because we're trolling on somebody else or because something you know unfortunate happens to us. But I love what you said is to, is to have a plan to get yourself out of that because every second that you've got a negative thought, negative feeling inside of you, it's impacting your future. It's impacting the way you show up. There's an opportunity cost of that. And you're going backwards, not forward. So awesome stuff, Michelle. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, love, love learning from you. Uh, let's go to this last topic. You've seen people who have gotten into the industry and in a matter of three years, they went from newbie to top producer. Talk to us a little about, about kind of your observation of this because you've been um, in everything from um, you know, kind of an entry level role within a title company to now, you know, one of the highest roles in the company. And you've kind of seen people progress and grow. Talk to us about your perspective and what agents um, can, can learn from that as they maybe are a little too close to their own journey to appreciate the progress that's happening. Absolutely. So three years ago, I picked up um, and moved from Northern California where I was born and raised six generations and moved to Arizona. And I have to tell you, I'm so grateful for social media because it allows me to keep connected to people. So that's one of the reasons why it was so easy to make the transition. But working in Northern California for my entire career, um, I had an opportunity to get to know uh, so many people in the industry and, and to meet new agents and to watch, you know, to watch them, to sit in that first new agent training and talk to them about riding that bicycle and, um, and jumping out there. And I think as a new agent, you know, everyone has... Um, they have that same, um, that same anxiety. I'm new. How am I ever going to, you know, go head to head with a, a top producer? And you know, I, they just don't see themselves because they haven't put the ten or fifteen years into the industry. Um, and so it's always an issue. And I know I always told them, you know, if I'm if I'm interviewing a couple of agents and a new agent says, yeah, I'm new, but look, I no one's going to work harder for you than I am. You know, you feel that, and that's why. Um, 
even listening to some of those ads, there's that one guy who does a radio ad and he says all of these great testimonials. And at the end, he says, I'm not bragging. I'm applying for a job. <laughs> and when you look at that, when you're applying for a job, when you really think about it, um, when you have someone who has X number of experience um, and they're applying for the job and they sort of come in with the swagger and you have that new young gun that's saying, man, I'm going to work my tail off. Um, you've got to tell your best story. So here's what's fascinating. Um, there are new agents, and, and I love it when things hit me upside the head. Um, I'm looking at installations and awards and things like that as they pop up on Facebook, and, and people that are assuming leadership positions um, within their local um, realtor associations, and even you know some of the um, NAREP and WCR. And, and I go, oh my gosh, Little Sally, the brand new agent, is now the president of that group. And and I, I went back for a wedding um, in October, and an agent who was brand new in the business is now one of the top producers, and she's actually speaking and training. And this is not unlike so cool. um, watching your kids grow. You know, um, I think for me now, and, and I don't have children, but for me now to see my friends who not only have children that are now driving, and I remember when we were just rocking them, but also that are having children of their own, um, that's, that's the same in business. Nothing stays the same. There's an evolution. Yeah. It's never too late to start. The people who are getting in the business now and they say, if only I had done this five years ago, 10 years ago, and you look at the market, um, in 2008, the market crashed. And now I'm looking back um, at 2012 and thinking, oh my gosh, that was the time to be buying up every piece of real estate you could possibly put your hands right. on. But it's always so clear in the rearview mirror. So the bottom line is, there's n it's never too late to start. Um, the people who are getting their licenses today are going to be our top producers of the future. And and it's here's what I love about real estate. And I was thinking about this before, before um, I, t I called you. Um, in sports, it's all about age, right? You have to get at this age. I mean, people asked Tiger when he won that last tournament, you know, um, at your age, and I think, what is he, 42? Um, at your age, can you believe that you can do this? And he said, you know, it's all this nutrition. This is what I love about real estate. It has nothing to do with age. Yeah. It doesn't matter if you're a new agent at 70, 60, 50, 90, I don't care, pick a number. Um, it's, there is nothing going to prohibit you from being wildly successful um, at what you do because it's not capped by that one milestone of, of age. So it's never too late to start. If this is your passion, if this is what you want to do, if this is where you're going to stake your claim, then go out there and do it. And, and I have to tell you, I wish I knew what, what it was, what the secret sauce was for success because I have to tell you, I've seen people that got off to a slow start that absolutely knocked it out of the park and they're a top producer. I, I've seen people who got off to a fast start and then crashed and burned. It really is, and this is why people like you, Justin, are so important. It really is what's going on here and what's going on here that's going to allow you to achieve all your dreams in this industry. Yeah, no, I totally agree. It's interesting. I have the um, regular opportunity of sitting with newer agents and I can feel um, how fast they're going to get started in the industry. You just feel it. If, if there's a lot of hesitation and insurity, I hope this works. Boy, I'm really hoping this works. Um, you know, I hope it does for them too, but I'm not overly confident it's going to happen quickly. But those that come in and say, look, I'm going to make this work. I have to make this work or I'm going to, like there's a certain confidence that emanates from them that as if I were a buyer or seller, I would feel that. And I would either want to entrust that person with, you know, one of the largest purchases I'll ever make uh, or not. Right. And so I think having that, and again, it's hard to fake that, right. You can for a little while, but ultimately it comes down to growing yourself. Cause as you grow yourself, as, as your thoughts get more confident, get, get bigger, get stronger, you, your, your actions tend to follow. Right. And people right. tend to feel that about you, that they're in good hands uh, because you're confident that you're gonna be able to take care of them. Yep. So absolutely. So much wisdom, Michelle. And, and you already answered the signature question. Um, so I think, uh, I think that's a wrap. I want to thank you so much for uh, pouring so much value into me and into this um, audience, the Think Bigger Real Estate audience. I, uh, I adore you, and I'm so grateful that uh, we get the chance to associate and work together. Absolutely. Thank you, Justin. I'm a huge fan. Keep doing what you're doing. It makes a difference. Thank you, my friend. All right. 
hey, for those of you that uh, are uh, tuning in today and you um, want to give some love back to Michelle for all the value that she added, please share this out. Um, give her some appreciation for what uh, she's done and the show that, that happens because of people like her. So uh, please give it a share and even tag people in it. That you think this, this would be valuable for them to hear. So thanks again, Michelle. Appreciate it.